Hey everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And this week's non-diabetes video is I'm just going to share with you how my dental health and safety course went for the summer um, and my job shadow experience and kind of my excitements for the dental hygiene program. So first of all, if you're new to my channel and you didn't watch my channel trailer or don't know much about my career ideas and career aspirations, I am right now starting my first year of dental hygiene school, which is an extremely hard program. It's extremely competitive, very lab and clinic ba based and very much a lot of rigorous studying, very much a lot of meticulous and detail oriented material that we have to know. And um, one of the program requirements before entering going into clinic level one is a class called dental health and safety, which basically is just a class in which we learn infection control, OSHA's bloodborne path pathogen standards, standards for the CDC, um, basic things like how to take patients' blood pressures and vital signs, how to disinfect an operatory, and get familiar and comfortable with the idea of learning sterilization techniques and using the sterilizers like the autoclave. And for us, we have one called a statum, which is one that's just basically a super quick way of sterilizing things. Like if you need something super quick or there's a sensitive item that cannot go through the autoclave, we need to know how to operate those two machines or those two tools so that we can use those when we're in a clinic and we need to keep our instruments clean. So this dental health and safety course would could be the equivalent of any of you or anybody, um, if any random dental hygiene student is finding this or somebody who is thinking of pursuing this degree um, wants to follow my journey, that's all good and fine. And I'm also gonna be sharing how I'm managing with the chronic condition because obviously dealing with type one diabetes is a little bit different too. But this class could also be labeled as infection control, and that's actually the book that we used. I'll insert a picture of it here. The book that we kind of followed some of the things off of. But every week we had like a learning plan and that we went through and reread PowerPoints. You could read the chapters in the book, and then each week at the beginning of our clinic or lab session, we'd have to take like a mini quiz, and then we would get taught on all these little different tools. Like one week was learning how to take vital signs. The next week was learning how to disinfect an operatory, how to operate an oxygen tank, what to do in a medical emergency if one of our patients has an asthma attack, one of our patients passes out, a patient has a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, a patient, uh, heaven forbid, has an angina attack, a patient, heaven forbid, has a type one diabetic like myself, goes into insulin shock. Any diabetic could overdo their medication or not eat a proper amount of food um, for their meal and end up having hypoglycemia. And we need to know how to take care of these people um, in order to get them the most effective treatment possible and then not end up with a devastating medical emergency. So the class was just basically how to be safe in a dental clinic, how to be safe um, and sterile and aseptic and all these different terms that um, are not the same, but are very similar. And we did this for like six weeks. Like we, my, the people that took it, um, there's like 20 students that are accepted in my college every year. And I'm gonna go more into depth about how I'm setting up accommodations dealing with type one diabetes. So that will be a separate video. Um, but for now, I will tell you that I'm definitely gonna have very minimal issues with my full-time instructors dealing with type one diabetes from what I've talked to at my accommodations meeting, I'm not gonna have like hardly any issues and I'm in a good spot with that. And I can't unveil to you guys where I go to college only because I'm only doing it to protect myself right now and to protect any of my students and my faculty that will be working alongside us um, for these next two years just to protect them. And when I graduate, maybe I'll unveil that because at that point then I'll have a job probably in a different spot or I won't be going there anymore. So then my safety is then protected um, and done. But uh, my college in particular is very good about dealing with people that have any type of chronic condition, learning disability, uh, physical disability, whatever the case may be, they're very accepting about that. And as a matter of fact, if they weren't, I know um, my one of my principals from the middle school is really, really close with the president of the college. They're best friends. So I don't foresee any problems dealing with this um, because if any faculty or any staff is not accommodating to a medical problem or a medical condition or a disability, no matter what that may be, um, they could lose their job or there's all these legal issues. So 
Um, I'm not going to have any problems in that aspect, but I will go over the basics of the dental health and safety course for you guys. And I'll kind of share my job shadow experience, which is something I have to do before my welcome week, which is August 20th and 21st. And then I actually start classes the last week of August. And then we have like that three day weekend or four day weekend for three day weekend for Labor Day. And then we're going to get grinding and we're going to get going. Um, so basically the first week we had, there was two groups. And of the 20 students, 13 of us had to take dental health and safety. The other six or seven were either either had taken the dental assisting course at a different college or a dental assisting course at my college. So they already have uh, all dental assistants and hygienists have to take the dental health and safety course. So they like had to, they got to bypass it. Um, but everybody else either has no dental experience or a couple of them were assistants, but because they weren't certified or they didn't actually take a formal dental health and safety course, they had to take this class. So there was 13 of us and um, there was two groups. They split us into two groups to make it easier for the instructors to make sure we're getting the appropriate things done and that we're doing things with the appropriate technique. So in my group, group A, our um, classes ran from 7.30 to 9.30 and then we had a 9.30 to 10.30 window for if we wanted to have open lab and practice things we could do so. And then group B went from 10.30 to 12.30, I think. Yeah, mine was really early. It was always on Thursdays. It was Thursdays in June and then Thursdays in July, except for the 4th of July we had off. Um, but the first week we had both A and B together and we had a basic lecture and basic stuff that how to kind of go over the course and things like that and what to expect and that was it. And then the remaining five weeks we had our individual groups. So like the first week after in clinic, we learned how to do like medical histories and get comfortable with like everything that was familiar in clinic, like where our patient education mirrors are, like where our blood pressure instruments are, like where the um, barrier tapes are and the barrier bags for like all the different like placing barriers and stuff what's in the different cupboards. We had to learn how to wash our hands. And yes, that is a competency. We had to learn how to wash our hands. Um, and they actually, the first week, they put this lotion on our hands and it was a special ultraviolet lotion that when we stuck our hands underneath the UV light, they could see exactly where we didn't properly wash our hands. And we all did like super good. Like they were impressed that like, we could wash our hands really, really good. And for most of us, including myself, like, the only thing that we all had to focus on is like right in between the nails. Like that is the most difficult place to wash your hands. And we have to wash our hands thoroughly before we don our personal like, protective equipment on after and when we first enter clinic. And anytime our hands get soiled, we need to wash our hands. That is a competency. That is learning how to be sterile in a dental environment and how to be uh, as aseptic as possible and to minimize bacteria and infection transmission. So we learned how to wash our hands. We learned how to deal with medical histories. We got a brief introduction about how to deal with patients that have different medical conditions, how they're handled in the dental clinic as a patient. Um, we got comfortable with like logging into our computers and you know where everything was in the different cupboards and stuff and got comfortable with the sterilization area. And then like we did the following week was like taking patients vital signs, learning how to count respirations, take a pulse and take a blood pressure, which let me tell you, taking a blood pressure at first, you're like, how in the heck do I operate this thing? But then you get really, really good at it. And it's like so simple to take a manual blood pressure on the brachial artery. Maybe I'll do a separate video all about blood pressure because that's very related to diabetes too. And if your blood pressure is out of whack, it can throw a whole bunch of things out of whack. Um, and we had to go over like clinic pr protocols. Like we had to, we have to say like, yes, your hair's got to be up. Um, you cannot have fingernail polish. So I'm sorry if you're going in the dental profession, especially at least when you're in school, they do not allow you to wear any form of nail polish on your nails and your nails have to be short. So like when they, when we hold our hands up, our fingernails can't go past like the, the end pad of our fingers. We can't have that um, because of the way we have to grasp instruments and because of you don't want to puncture your glove with a nail, right? Um, it's for our safety and for us to be able to properly hold the instruments because there's a, a certain way to hold all these different scaling instruments, ultrasonic instruments, whatever they are, there is a very specific way we have to hold them. And in order to do that, you don't want long nails getting in your way. We always have to wear our scrubs, our name badge. And then we always have to wear too, when we're working with patients, we have like a um, disposable lab coats. We have safety glasses, masks, 
And depending on if we're like disinfecting a room or transporting instruments to sterilization, we have to wear utility gloves. But then when you're working with patient, you wear patient treatment gloves, which are the basic doctor gloves that you all know about. Um, we had to get comfortable with like how they want us to launder our um, clinic scrubs. Like we have to wear white clinic shoes. We have to make sure that our ankles aren't exposed, that our wrists aren't exposed. We can't have any dangling jewelry, no earrings, no piercing showing, no tattoos showing. We have to be clean. We can't have any, we can't be smelling in clinic because that can be foul to some people. Obviously, if you're a dental health professional, you shouldn't be smelling anyway. Um, but we also can't wear heavy perfumes or heavy scents because that can trigger some people to have into an allergy attack. Some people get migraines from all the different scenty things. So we have to keep like our scents to a minimum. Our makeup has to be to a minimum. Um, we need to keep our teeth clean, all those basic things. Um, we went over all of that. Um, we learned how to disinfect an operatory. And let me tell you, there's a very specific way to do it, especially if you're in school. And that's something I noticed in my job shadow that they don't do is in detail because there's just not time. Um, but when you're in school, there's a very specific way you have to do it because the school has to be accredited by the American Dental Association in order for you to get licensed as a hygienist or as an assistant, depending on what you're going for. And there's a very specific way they have to do things. Otherwise, um, instructors could have problems with their job. I mean, the school could get inspected and shut down. There's so many different things. Like we have to do things in a specific way in order to keep everybody safe and everybody healthy because it is a learning environment because we're not obviously licensed yet. We're learning how to become licensed dental hygienists. So that was a very <laughs> fun thing to learn. And once you do it about three or four times over, you get sick and tired of disinfecting an operatory. And once you learn how to do it over and over and over again, you get pretty damn good at it. Just like taking a blood pressure and just like learning all the different pieces to the sterilization and all those different things. So you get very comfortable with it very, very quickly, but it's over repetition that you're gonna learn to do these things. And that's the case like in dental hygiene, like the, the career is very repetitive. Um, you constantly clean teeth all day and do prophylaxis, take x-rays, <laughs> do patient medical histories, um, all these different things that come in patient education. It's a continuous thing. And um, as annoying as it was to have to clean an operatory over and over and over again, let me tell you, I'm a pro at it now. It's just like, I know what I'm doing. I got my routine and I'm all set to go. Then our last week was our all our assessments and we were still split into our separate groups because only so many people again can be in clinic at once. So like our group took the written assessment first I scored an A on that. That wasn't like super hard, but I just like, we had to take it in our assessment center in our college, which is kind of a weird environment. Like you can't have like anything and it's just like really, I don't like taking tests in the assessment center. I can't stand it, but I made it through. Um, and then we did, um, and then group B did their, their clinical assessments first. Like, can they take a blood pressure? Can they sterilize an op? Can they, or can they disinfect an operatory? Can they operate the sterilization machines? And then our group went in for the afternoon and did all that. So like, um, and then we had our own like little schedule. So like my first assessment was the autoclave. I got like one point off, which is um, the week before we did the statum evaluation. So there was one evaluation that we all did the week before all the other assessments, which is the statum, which is a sterilization tool that we use if we have a sensitive item or we need something done really quickly. So like say I drop my hand mirror or I drop my periodontal probe when I'm working on somebody, I can quick throw that in the statum and it will sterilize that so that I can go back and reuse that um, or anything like that. My first evaluation the following week was the autoclave, which is the other sterilization tool, which is the one that takes longer. Um, it takes like anywhere from 30, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and it has a certain PSI. We had to know that. We had to know the spore test, how to identify when things need to be filled, um, when the water levels need to be changed or needed to be added. We needed to know like when it's done and what indicates sterility. I got like one point off on that. I don't remember what I got off on that. And then I did op disinfection next and that is the most intense evaluation of the whole thing because you literally have an instructor with a clipboard and you have like 27 different items that you have to be able to do um, and do properly in order to pass and all our competencies we had to have a 78 percent or higher on each in order to pass the evaluation and if we didn't we'd have to do a re-evaluation um i got two points taken off on op disinfection for two basic things um 
I think it was like one, I didn't place the barrier tape properly on like the handle that has like our instrument where we like the tray where we place our instruments and control the chair. Um, and the other thing I got taken off for is, was I accidentally picked up cavi wipes at the end of my um, assessment with bare hands instead of gloves. So that breaks disinfection protocol. So I got another point taken off for that. But other than that, like she was like all pleased with my timing and stuff. And yeah, that went really good. And then I got blood pressure. I got like two points off on blood pressure. So I passed that. And then oxygen tank was the final thing. We had to learn like how to use an oxygen tank in case somebody needs oxygen. And I got a hundred on that. That was like really easy because it's just like, how do you turn it on? What do you use it for? What do you do with the mask? All those different things. So as much as this class was easy, it was very, very annoying and repetitive just because it's like, it's not interesting stuff and it doesn't make sense until you actually got a patient in your chair and you're doing things or you're doing it over and over again and you're treating patients and I'm just ready to start working on each other and start working on patients. I'm just ready to just get into that kind of stuff because that's what the main thing is, is like being able to handle patients. But in order to handle patients, you need to make sure that they're in a sterile and safe and healthy environment. So this class has a purpose, but it was very, very introductory. It was very, very basic. It was very, very tedious, but I got through it with an A. I only lost 12 points the whole class, which is pretty impressive. Um, so that was good. And I just want to say for any of you that are going for dental hygiene or are thinking about it, it is a hard program. Very, very hard program. Um, it's a lot of rigor and it's a lot of different things. You have all these competencies and this was kind of getting us introduced to that because like when you're doing a competency, they got a checklist sitting right in front of you and they're watching your every move to make sure that you can satisfy the competency, that you can do certain things with a certain amount of skill and if you need reevaluation or remediation or whatever the case may be. Um, and I actually emailed the one instructor that watched me disinfect an operatory was not one of the instructors that taught the class, but she is a full-time instructor. And I emailed her after saying like how I appreciated the critique she gave me and that I'm gonna use that and do better the next time on off disinfection. Even though I got two points off, like that'll be like the two things I make sure I don't do next time. Because if I can do everything else, then like I just have to focus on the things that I don't do as well or I didn't do as properly as it should have been. And she responded back and said, there's strength in an attitude like that. And um, like, and I don't think, well, not like the other instructors are, there's nothing wrong with them, but I feel like I really got like with her and she's like, show me how you do this. So I did it and she's like, do it this way. And this time it's not going to be, you know, this is the more proper way to do it. This is not the way you did it was not ideal and stuff like that. So learn how to take constructive criticism from the get go because you're going to get a lot of that and you're going to find very quickly that you're going to have strengths and you're going to do really well in some aspects and you're going to have weaknesses and that's the point of learning and growing is like take your constructive criticism and learn from it and don't get mad at it they're not there to make you mad they're not there to fail you they're not there to put you down but they're there to make you a better hygienist for when you're out in the real world they're there to make you a better employer. They're there to make you a better person and a stronger person or a stronger hygienist and have strong skills and strong abilities to help people with their oral health. So um, I already know like for like right now, like she's like my top. Like I, I actually really enjoy working with her because she's so, I said, I really appreciate an instructor who looks at the details and who can give constructive criticism in a way that doesn't hurt you and in a way that um, you can learn and grow from that. And I appreciate instructors that want to push you to the maximum. I appreciate instructors that want to pound you to be the best version of yourself. I really like instructors like that. And I think she and I are going to get along great. And I really like that. And I complimented her on that. And, you know, basically telling me that there's strength in an attitude like that. That's for any program. Health science, any program, take your constructive criticism and run with it. Because it's only going to make you a better person. It's only going to make you a stronger um, employer where, or employee wherever you decide to be employed in the future. So that's kind of how that went and I enjoyed the class for the most part. The only thing that's just tedious is just repeating an op disinfection. Um, but you get good at it and you get to the point where it's like she could even see like too when we were doing the op disinfection like there was like an order they had it in, but I knew I did some things out of order and I was freaked out that I was going to get deducted points, but they're not so much worried about if you do it like this, if you disinfect the light 
the overhead lights before you do the counter. As long as you do it, do it, they don't really have a particular clue like how you're going to do it. And that's like, a huge thing is to find your routine and that's like a thing that I think she could tell like I had a routine I was just like doing it in my own way like I did this and then I did this and then I'm gonna go over here and do this and I'm gonna put this barrier on first this barrier on last and I really love that she could tell like I had established my own routine and I think they really appreciate that because that just makes it easier on you to remember things um so yeah that's how that class went and now I'll kind of share like what I learned from my job shadow so before we enter into our clinic level one, at the end of August, we have to do a job shadow. And um, I don't know if all my classmates got theirs done, but I did mine like right away, like at the end of June, like when I was doing dental health and safety. And I was really glad I did it because the day before, I did my job shadow the day before one of my dental health and safety classes. And I got to see firsthand, like how they do a disinfecting and operatory, what the sterilizations look like and how they interact with patients and how a typical, dental cleaning works and like their scheduling and what they do when they don't have a patient or a patient doesn't show up what kind of happens what do you do to keep yourself busy and keep yourself occupied and I got to shadow two very awesome hygienists one actually went to the same college I did and she said you're just gonna love the program it's gonna be stressful but you're gonna love it um, just like anything else any college program is gonna be stressful because you're learning all these things for the first time and you're getting thrown into an environment that you're probably not very comfortable in until you get there and that's one thing I really appreciated about dental health and safety was like just the idea of being able to get comfortable in a clinical setting was so important. And I felt pretty comfortable right from the get go. I loved the saddle chairs. I loved everything was set up so clean, so organized. And I really feel comfortable in our dental hygiene clinic in my school. I really feel comfortable in there and I feel comfortable with all the instructors. Like I said, it's going to be great. Um, but the biggest thing that, that I learned from both of those hygienists and they both emphasized to me so much was find your routine. Once you learn, you're going to, she said, you're going to learn this instructor might handle this instrument this way, which is not wrong, but another instructor might show you a different way. And I, I noticed this in Optus Infection. There was one instructor who said, this is how I place this barrier. And the other one said, this is how I do this. And I kind of mixed them together or I found my own way and I they were fine with it and it's like you have to find the routine and as long as it meets standards for the dental health safety and for the health of the patient and obviously like meeting like health standards you're fine and they said like find your routine and find what works the tools that work best for you and like they said you're going to find different tools that you're going to like better like you're going to either prefer like a hand instrument or you're going to prefer the ultrasonics you're going to learn all these different things but then you're going to really find what you really like to use and how you like to get yourself set up in clinic and all these different things. And they were explaining to me like school is so much more formal than like the real world. Like obviously like they took, they disinfect their ops in like five minutes. Whereas like we get 20 and we have to do like 16,000 other different things. But I understand in school they would rather teach us the very formal professional thorough way because they don't know if I'm going to be employed at a governmental office or a governmental based type dental clinic or if I'm going to be private practice it's going to be different they would rather you know how to do everything in a thorough manner than so then if you do have to do everything in a thorough manner that you can do it properly but they basically um showed me like all different things I got to help one of my one of the hygienists like perio chart meaning that like when she was reading the numbers I just punched them in the computer I thought that was super cool that I got to help with that um, and I asked her some questions about like, you know, I know what this means, but is this considered bad? Is this considered good? And then they kind of explained like, you know, like it's bad. It's good. It doesn't really matter as long as like the next time they come in, we don't see any worse progression or we want them to see improvement. That's what we want to see. It's not like you necessarily are labeling things, but that like you're looking for changes and, um, you need to adapt to different people. And, um, obviously like I can't share like exact things that I saw because that would be breaking HIPAA policy but I, I'm glad at this clinic that I shadowed at that I got to see a variety of different patients from kids to adults to older people um, I got to shadow two amazing hygienists um, like I said one that went to my clinic and I really got a lot of good advice from her and stuff like that and um, the biggest thing like I said to learn is to find your routine and find the comfortability that works for you while still being able to maintain sterilization and do the appropriate prophylaxis techniques and scaling and all that different stuff so um the drop shadow was fun it was four hours i got to see x-rays get taken i got to see interactions with dentists i got to see interactions with assistants 
secretaries, sterilization. It, it was just amazing, and I am no doubt in my mind that I'm so happy with the career I've chosen, and I think it's going to be really laid back as far as blood sugar-wise. Now, in school, it's probably going to be harder just because, like, of like being nervous and stuff for different competencies i wouldn't be shocked if my blood sugars go high temporarily and then they come down but that's what i'm working for in accommodations and that was definitely the most difficult thing probably in clinic is that i let my blood sugars run higher than i would like them to but because i didn't have accommodations quite set up i wasn't i would rather them run a little higher than lower so that i don't go low and pass out in clinic and have all these different things happen um and my clinics are only like was like two hours long and stuff like that so being in that temporary setting, it doesn't really bother me to have higher blood sugars. But again, I'm working with accommodations. I've got pretty much everything set up so that like if I pull out my insulin pump to correct that high before it gets above 200, kind of like unlike in the other clinic or my dental health and safety clinic, like I was just like ignoring it and not really paying attention because I was scared what was going to happen and stuff. Um, but as long as like everybody knows like what my tools are what my devices are and stuff like that everything's gonna be all fine and dandy so I love the class that I took I love the shadowing that I did and I'm so excited to be starting on August 26th full-time dental hygiene student and I've been waiting for this moment for so long and I worked my hiney off to get to this point because my program is extremely competitive and there were so many things I had to do before I had all my general education I had to take I had to take entrance exams oh my goodness background checks unbelievable tuberculosis tests vaccination records it's just like you know you have all these different requirements but as i go forward i'm going to be talking about like each semester after it's done because there's four total semesters and then we have a summer optional summer clinic in between that we can take between year one and year two which should be next summer for me and i'm definitely going to take that only because like to just make sure that you can keep up on your instrumentation and that like you can keep up on you know keeping the environments um sterile and stuff so i'm really really excited for this journey and it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be difficult and i'm probably gonna cry coming home some days but i'm gonna make it and i'm gonna be fine because i can do it and i think in the end it's gonna be so worth it and i know at the end there's board exams that i'm gonna have to study for and that's gonna be challenging and i'll be talking about that later um, we have to recruit our own patients which is going to be a challenge but I'm actually starting right now working on a little thing for like different people um so like if my mom goes to work or I'm out and about in my area just to let people know like hey do you want to be my patient <laughs> you got you got an option and um what's cool is like I love how our clinic is focused on helping people in need and you know we we offer the costs that reduce costs but they have to come in a couple appointments because it takes us time to learn all these skills and also because an instructor is going to come in we're going to do a little bit of work they're going to say okay you did this move on to the next step whereas like once we get proficient as a hygienist we're doing cleanings every hour on the hour we got 30 or 20 or 40 minutes to an hour to do a cleaning on a person um, whereas like when we first learning it takes two to three hours for us to complete one patient and it may take more than one appointment depending on how many different evaluations you have to do. So I'm excited to share this journey with you and I'll make a video upcoming here about how I'm going to do like YouTube with school. Uh, my schedule isn't too horrible as far as fall is concerned like I'm not in school like 10 20 hours a day or something like that. However I may have to like cut back down to like two videos a week just so that I have time to study and I think you guys will understand that but I wanted to give you a recap how my health and safety course went how my job shadow went and all that stuff my fall classes are process level one which we have lecture and lab component which is where we learn the basic skills of a dental hygienist I have radiography which is learning how to take x-rays there's a lecture and a lab component I have dental uh, hygiene ethics course uh, which is learning I how to the ethics of a dental hygienist right the professionalism um all those different things and maintaining privacy and all these different things with different patients and stuff um and like i said i'll talk about as i'm going forward in this journey like different things that i can share like i'm not obviously going to be able to say like hey my patient his name was this and this and he had this level of calculus and all this stuff i can't do that um, because that's breaking patient uh, patient privacy and HIPAA. That's that is breaking HIPAA standards. I can't do that. Um, and the other class I have is oral anatomy, which is also a lecture and lab component. And then starting next year, um, we will start seeing our own patients um, for process level two, three, and four. 
And then by May of 2021, I will be all done and I will have the name, the label RDH after my name. And I'll talk in the future too. I think I'm going to just go right for my bachelor's degree. Um, it's, it's a little less with a high, with a dental hygienist, like you have like most of your clinical work done within like for an associates, but basically it would just be added more added like book work classes in order to have um, a bachelor's of science degree instead of an associate of applied science. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned for more videos coming out this month about dealing with diabetes and accommodations. Um, kind of how I deal with blood sugars and lab to the best of my ability. Um, look forward to me at the end of like December talking about what happened in semester one for dental hygiene school and stuff like that and what will be upcoming for me in semester two. Um, as I get further along too, um, I may share more, share more of this because I've been watching a lot of different people that have been sharing their journey in dental hygiene school and I've learned a lot from them. And I'll also be sharing this too for anybody that wants to become a dental hygienist because it may help them like find patients or like how I'm gonna end up studying for my boards. Maybe I'll share my experience when I do take my boards in just a little under two years what I do for competencies, how I study, how I, you know, keep on top of things and all that stuff. So anyways, if you enjoyed this very long video, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post videos every single week about diabetes plus more. And until next time for another video, take care, God bless, be kind, spread positivity, and be thankful. Bye.